Welcome to Inside the Borough, the FAU podcast for and by FAU fans. Inside the Borough is presented by the FAU Owl's Nest. Follow us on Twitter at Inside the Borough. Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Inside the Borough, the FAU podcast for and by fans. I am Dan. Uh, I've been out the past couple weeks. Uh, I am joined, as usual, with Shane and Jack. Uh, And this week we are really uh, going to set our sights and focus on Marshall. So uh, we'll kind of – we'll dive right into it. So FAU at Marshall uh, this Saturday, overall record – uh, Marshall has been been pretty dominating, four to one. Uh, last year we got our first our first win against Marshall, and um, you know so hopefully FAU will be up to the task this year. Uh, but I think it'll be it'll be a tall task. Um, so we'll kind of dig into uh, we'll dig into that. But um, yeah, I think my my first impression is who. Uh, you know, F- FAU definitely the the more talented team, but uh, what are we going to get out of the offense uh, against ODU? We saw some more creativity. I think you guys talked about it last week um, with Harrison Bryant. Um, you know, just running in the slot, uh, lining up in the slot. Hopefully, that kind of creativity. And I think the beginning of the year, we kept running the same couple plays, and teams were ready for them this year. So I think uh, if the offense comes out. Um, you know, keeping with that creativity and keeping teams off guard, I, th- I think it'll it'll it's a, it'll still be a close game no matter what because FAU's defense isn't what it was last year. But um, yeah, I think I I think it'll be a good game. What do you what do you guys think? I think us and Marshall are so identical. I mean, they are just mirrored teams, even from the way they you know we've each played ODU the last two weeks. Both teams have done a good job of stopping the run. Right now, Marshall's only allowing. Uh, just a hair over three yards a carry against their opponents. Now, granted, they have not played OU and UCF. Um, they played a pretty good NC State team at home. Uh, you know, they're, they're having quarterback issues. I, I don't think they're as talented as quarterback. They're just as talented up front. Their defense is really good. Uh, their running back, King, is really good. And the receiver, Tyree Brady, the UM transfer, who yeah, did some damage to us last year is good. Um, and he, you know, he'll bail, you know, he'll be able to bail their quarterbacks out a little bit. Uh, the um, his name just slipped my mind. Just the Wagner transfer, uh, is start has been starting the last few games for Marshall. The uh, and he's he's struggled, I believe, in the second half. They only threw seven times last week. So it's if we could stop the run, it's huge advantage. But again, Marshall's saying the same thing because Chris Robinson has not been good on the road. Yeah, um, I'm really concerned about Tyree Brady. Uh, the the passing coverage has been inconsistent this year. Uh, I think that he definitely can bail out uh, Thompson, the, the quarterback who started against Old Dominion. He only had like 150 yards. Uh, think about that. That can only get 150 or 70 passing yards against Old Dominion. That's really saying something. But Tyree Brady is a monster. He's probably the best wide receiver in the conference. Uh, yeah, we are pretty similar in ways, uh, except I really am worried about their defense for us. You know, our defense has been just so inconsistent. We know that we have the talent there, but we haven't been able to do anything with it. Well, so, I, I, as long as we're able to put up points, if we can outscore them, if, if Motor, Kareth can have good days, Javon, Willie can, can, you know, dominate on the outside to free up Harris and Bryant in the slot and in the inside of the field, um, then we should be able to outscore them, no problem. But, you know, Chris Robinson, it's another away game, hostile environment. It's homecoming for Marshall. It's, it, this could be another one of those games where he struggles. Uh, and if he has a game like he did against the second half of Thune Cookman, then we could be in some serious trouble. It it wouldn't matter that FIU beat Middle Tennessee last week. Yeah, I, 
it's supposed to be cooler and rain in the morning. It, it's going to be one of those kind of cloudy, um, cold days. It's like a low of 50 in the low 50s at kickoff. So it, it's going to kind of feel like that Western Kentucky game last year. Yeah. Uh, I had, you know, I had someone who I was speaking to on the board and they gave me the number of 28. It's kind of our goal in this game. If we get to 28, it's our game. I, I Even though I think Marshall's defense is better, our quarterback has a way better chance of carrying the game. I, they're not going to get a good game out of their quarterback. Uh, Chris Robinson has a chance to throw for 300 yards. I don't think their quarterback does. And at least they haven't shown it in – you know, they, they've been trying to hide him. Uh, yeah. And they've rotated quarterbacks. You know, we've stuck with Robinson uh, the whole way through. So, if we can go early and get going, and we can force them to throw a ball a little bit. But then again, we've had trouble getting to the passer. Uh, Lane mentioned that in his press conference today. It's kind of the most shocking thing this season. It's just – you know, all training camp, we were just kept hearing about this D-line and we're deep and we finally have some guys. And even the two Juco guys couldn't pass, you know, couldn't make the starting lineup because there was just guys there. And, I mean, how, how, do we just have a true sack this year where just a DN came around the corner and hit somebody right. and sacked them? It's well, bad. I think per, we may have, um, you know, I, 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 I most of the team, I think there was one. I think mo most of the teams that we've played, they've had more of, um, you know, outside of ODU of running quarterbacks. I mean, Marshall's, Marshall runs a more pro style, um, you know, with a uh, pocket passer type. So if there's ever going to be a week where we could get that true sack, um, this would be it. I, I, I don't know. I mean, Marshall, they lost to, they lost to Western Kentucky at home. No, um, no, they beat Western Kentucky. I'm sorry. They, I'm beat, sorry. They, they beat Western Kentucky. They beat them by three. Um, and lost to middle at home. I don't know. I, I think it's – we're certainly – And they lost – and just how speaking how identical the teams are, I watched that whole Marshall Middle Tennessee game, and they lost in an identical fashion yeah. that we did. They were up early, looked like they are controlling the game, and the next thing you know, the offense sputtered for them. Yeah. Uh, and it started with a missed field goal, kind of like how, you know, we had the – snap or fake whatever we tried yeah um and it, it started with that with marshall and next thing you know man stockdill every third and 11 it was scramble find someone yeah i mean there was a the, you know middle tennessee got a couple of calls just like it literally i thought if you put marshall in white uniforms and put owls on their helmets that game I, you could have tricked me and told me it was a replay of the last game there was like a you know, actually, Middle Tennessee got called with a penalty, and there was like a second and 25. I think Marshall was still up three at the point. Middle Tennessee was driving. They were just inside Marshall's 35. And like Stock still hit, just tossed up some kind of just not the safest throw in the world and picked up 23 yards on the second and 23, which left him with a third and two. It was just. I'm watching it going, how does this kid just keep – it was luck, and it just felt the same. They hit a two-point conversion. Yep. It was – there. you know, it, it literally felt the same way, and it just – and then Alex and all of a sudden their quarterback, Alex Thompson's his name, who for those who don't know was a star at Wagner. Yes, Wagner, um, and, and grad transferred there. Um, and, we, we, you know, he actually wasn't a star. He was hurt last year at Wagner. But he still has this really big frame, and, you know, he was – A you know, typical Marshall quarterback, basically. Yeah, but, you know, they got him from an FCS school, and right. people thought, well, he shouldn't be at FCS school. I mean, this kid has, you know, NFL scouts are looking at him. He has that prototypical body. You know, he's big. He's strong. So, they're like, he should be playing at this level, and I just don't think he's adjusted to it. I mean, he didn't start the first four games. He didn't really win the battle coming out. and. Yeah. They've tried to hide him, but Marshall can run the ball. Uh, it, it, they're, they're rushing offense. Um, Tyler King is really good. He's averaging over six yards a carry. So, you know, a sophomore running back, it's 
you know, it, my concern is, is we get in one of these games where we can't really move the ball. They're running a little bit and all it's going to take is Tyree Brady beating us deep a couple times to, and, or caught forcing a couple PIs and third, we're going to be in a yeah. game or pulling out our hair or force a PI late and kind of bail their quarterback out. And we don't win. That's yeah. I mean, I, hopefully that this is, you know, the, the past experiences that we've had of, of kind of, you know, going up 21 to three on middle and then losing, you know, that, that type of, uh, that type of mindset of, okay, let, well, let's keep going and, and not kind of not backing off. Hopefully that, that helps. But again, it's, it's a conference game on the road. Anything can happen. I mean, we, we saw that against middle, um, you know, it, and, and I don't think any one of us feel very confident uh, this year, but we did, we it definitely could go in and it, you know, the score could be 45 to 27 FAU. I mean, it's the yeah. offense could show up. Um, so I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's tough to, to, you certainly can't make any predictions because this team has just been, it's so inconsistent. The offense has been inconsistent. Defense has been, been inconsistent as well. Um, I, I just feel like we still don't have the sample size. I mean, you could throw out, throw out Bethune and OU. And you can even argue at UCF a bit, like as games compared. So I, we only have really, I think, two, we only have two games against our kind of level of competition at this point. Uh, right. so, yeah, just about. Or three games, three games. You count Air Force. So, you know, that – you know, I, I still don't have a great feel of this team. Are, are they, you know, we're so at the same record we were last year. Are we about to go on that run with an expanded passing game? Um, I, I said I rewatched after my big argument on the board defending Antonio Riles, and I watched about 80 plays from those Middle Tennessee and ODU. I, I thought they looked good against ODU, but there's still just so many little things that they're just – it's like they're obviously the more dominant team, but they just can't put seem to put a, a bunch of little things together on defense, get off the field. The red zone defense is just bad. We talked about it last week. They're they're atrocious. I, I, um, I, dude, I'm really starting to think that maybe just maybe Coach Peck wasn't the reason why Southern Miss had such a strong defense because they still have a top twenty defense in the country. Uh, well, I oh, Southern Miss's schedule wasn't that strong, and I've read that there wasn't a lot of Southern Miss fans. So sometimes those defensive rankings are they 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 don't tell they the don't tell story. the whole story. But what does tell a story is that this defense has been inconsistent, and that's really the only thing to have changed. Uh, it, it's it's just worrisome because you know we can get an early lead, and you know, we can't even hold it. You know, we can pull another Middle Tennessee game. But the defense, Middleton, I thought the defense played great versus Middle Tennessee. Let's they played, let's they fine they, until they the scored twice on really short fields. Yeah, right. and so so until the offense starts stuttering. But that's what I'm saying. It's like once the offense starts stuttering and gives our opponents short fields to work with, do we have enough faith in our defense to make a stop like they did last year? I, I don't see it right now because we, we can't stop teams as soon as they get in the red zone. Uh, we can't stop teams if the defense keeps going out in the field and the offense is going three and out. I'm just, I'm just worried because there just seems to be lapses. We're yeah. the first part of that ODU game. They look great. Yeah. Lane was going for it. ODU started at like midfield twice. Lane was just like, yeah, we're putting it, we're putting pressure on the defense. Yeah. And, and they stopped them. They had a big fourth down stop earlier in a, on the first drive ODU first had. Drive, yeah. You drove right down the field. They had a fourth down stop there. Um, you know, it, it, seemed, it seemed like Lane was almost testing them. Um, and then it's just one little thing happens. Aziz gets called with the just most freaking atrocious targeting call. Next play is a screen down to the five. And right. then the play after that. Jose Barnwell, you know, I didn't realize this at the game, was not even on the field. They, they had 10 men and ODU scores. And then ODU kind of we, – we score right before half. We get up big. And in the third quarter, they just kind of lapse. And ODU's kind of throwing it around until 
Kareth White and Motor took over. Yeah. So we, we just haven't seen that complete game from the defense yet. Uh, they played great in the first half against Middle, against Bethune Cookman. Uh, great. And, you know, I want to say until I, they played great the whole game versus Middle. I mean, Stockdale made some elite throws running around. They got lucky. I mean, the, the last drive was on a short field. I, they played great. If you tell me right now you'll get the same effort and same performance out of the defense as middle. Right. We'll probably we'll, win the game. We'll, by three touchdowns. Because yeah. Alex Thompson's not making any of those back shoulder throws or scrambling around on third and 12 and hitting a guy where you're going, oh, my God, how do we let that happen? It's not happening. Yeah. Well, I, I think if we had a defensive line that could cause havoc like they used to, then we wouldn't have to give mediocre stock still. Uh, we wouldn't be calling him elite thrower stock still. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a good quarterback. I mean, he's a, he's a senior, no, obviously no, knows the offense uh, really well. Not that it really has anything to do with it, but he's a senior, he's very experienced. What? He's hurt again. Man, I called and, that two and weeks ago. <laughs> and, he's, and that's why FAE won, which is beneficial for us. But, right, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, it's not that he's elite, but he's, he's a good quarterback. He's a good quarterback for Conference USA, um, above average quarterback for Conference USA. And, and he showed it against uh, – and he showed it against us. And that was one of the things that I was concerned about is, like, if it's a late game back then, I don't really want to go up against Stockstill because he's experienced. He's been there before. But and yeah, you you also. have a, a red shirt freshman against uh, uh what? How old is he now? Thirty five. <laughs> Doc still he's been there forever. Uh, well, you know, he it, has it, more he has more injuries than an eighty five year old lady. So pretty much so <laughs> got he, hurt again. And it's I, I don't know I, I I don't know what to make of it. I I was more confident a couple weeks ago in this game because I'm like, the, the bye week is huge. I think Lane is a way better coach than – Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a big advantage. I think it's – this team needed a bye, just kind of reset. It, not only for – like Lane talked about the legs for a little bit, but I think there was like a lot, especially with the coaching staff more than anything evaluation. You know, one thing I learned is they brought Tony Peck on the sideline for the ODU game. Um from up in the booth, you know, that's, I, I don't know how much of a different that is. I think if you're used yeah. to calling plays upstairs, when I hear sideline, when I hear coach goes to sideline, your first thought is they don't get the defense and they need someone there telling them that's, that's football one-on-one. Right. We, any offense or defensive coordinator, when they're down at the sideline and Lane even kind of said it in his press conference today, he's like, you know, sometimes it's just easier for guys just to hear it where they're being told, yeah. you know, from, um, so it's, and if, if that, if that's what, if that's what makes it click to where the defense can start playing more consistently, then, you know, maybe, maybe that's just one of the small changes that we, um, that we make. So if, if that's, if that's one of the changes we need to make in order for this defense to click, then we got some issues, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it could have, they played simple last year. I mean, they don't have to play great. I'm just you know, we get to talk this next three game stretch is our season. I mean, yeah. it's, it's two games on the road. It's at Marshall, uh, you know, home versus Louisiana tech. Who's definitely is a really good opponent. And then at FIU, I mean, I don't even like the North and people want to keep bringing up the North Texas game. And I'm just like, that's a wild card Thursday night. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here, but these next three games are just, if, if we lose one of these next three games, it's not going to matter what happens in North, North Texas because the season's over. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a bit nervous. I just uh, – I'm just really concerned about the defense. I, I was happy that we showed some swagger uh, against Old Dominion, but we, we couldn't do anything. Uh, uh, Jalen yeah. Young looked healthy. Yeah, finally. Yeah, and I saw that rewatching that. And Jalen Young started to look like him old self. And I could tell that made a difference. Yeah. But once uh, Aziz left, it wasn't the same. Um, Jay was playing with fire. Aziz was playing with fire. Yeah. I was playing with heart. It was good. They had some swagger to him. Hard hitting like they were last year, which was nice. But, uh, you know, if, if this is a close game going into the fourth quarter, we're up by seven, up by ten. Um, 
it, who knows, man? It's going to be cold. It's only going to get colder as the I'll night. Take being up by ten going in the fourth quarter, I think I'll, that's. I'll, well, I'll take being up at all. <laughs> I'll, yeah, exactly. I'll take it, but I'm saying it's still a game if if that happens. You know. Yeah. You know that you know people have talked about how like they mentioned how we haven't won against Mar- up in Huntington, but Huntington's a place FU really hasn't played terrible. Yeah. No, we go back, games. Yeah, even if you go back to uh, the year where Marshall, you know, great. I think outside of a, the, the the middle of Charlie Partridge year, the one where OC Rose had the long one, all of our Marshall games are pretty close. I mean. Even last year, they played us close. I mean, that was a game we kind of won on trick plays. Yeah. But um, it, it's, you know, we you think we went up there a couple years ago with Quez, and even though freaking Doc ran up the score in the fourth quarter on a couple late touchdowns, it was like a four-point game in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And Lucky White had, had a touchdown in that game. And that was a 3-9 and nine team going against, like, I think Marshall's in the top 25. They were like 7-0 at that time. They had the Rakeem Cato. That was like their big year. Yeah. Were, uh, it was the first time they were going in a halftime losing, and it was like the 7 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it, we were up 16-14, I believe. So they played them well. And then we go up there two years. It's the Charlie Partridge last year. And FAU – was they were like winning and i remember in that remember in that game we had a on a fourth and one we were driving they decided to do a toss sweep to kareth white instead of just running it you guys remember that yeah. it was like a big I, fourth. Remember, I, I remember that was um uh, goodness I, I just remember the end of the game um caleb woods falling down it, or making a yeah catching the ball before the first down marker and either time running out or it was, it was fourth down. The I play remember. was reviewed. I don't think he caught it. Yeah. Well, they, the crazy part of that was that was my ultimate out of all the stuff Ake Charlie did was there was a play where Marshall scored, we reviewed it. There was like 50 seconds left. We yeah. reviewed it. It got overturned. But Marshall was like on the one, and it was like second down anyways. And then as soon as they come out of the review – there was like, yeah, I think just over a minute left. Yeah, a minute. FAU six- doesn't call a timeout. Marshall just lets 30 seconds burn off. Yeah. We call a timeout, and then they run it in. Because Marshall's like, oh, we're going to let as much time be- run off before we jam in the end zone. And Charlie Partridge and Rock Bellatoni are all like, oh, I don't know how to manage a game because I was, I was the custodian at my last coaching job. And they let 30 seconds burn off, and I'm going like – you call time out there. They're going to score. You need to start thinking about how you're going to score back. You think and you would have learned that lesson from the Wyoming game? No, that's not – I mean, just terrible clock – I think once coaches are bad at clock management, I, Andy Reid's been coaching for 100 years and he still can't manage the clock. You know, it's, it's just like you're about to get this call overturned. I would have gone to the ref and been like, hey, if they're at the one, call time out. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. I don't want a second to burn off because when they just hand it off and run it in, I need a minute, three seconds to go back down the field. But even then, that, was, that wasn't a very good Marshall team. But back to our point, that was a close game. It's a place we've never played terrible at. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just going through the, uh, how we played against Marshall over the years. Yeah, just really that one game in 2015 where it kind of got out of hand, uh, 33-17. That's the one where O.C. Rose had a uh, – Yeah, and that was more late scoring at the end. You got to remember a couple of those games, Doc Holliday was throwing Hail Marys with a minute to go because that's yeah. what Doc Holliday – you know. They were trying to boost their rankings and stuff. Yeah, they, but, you know, and Charlie, he, he, there was comments made – they didn't get along. but They did not, no. They, they did not like – also – Let's just factor FIU, which I don't think was a great team last year, went up to Marshall Beat and whooped them after a bye week. Yep. Beat them bad. It, it was, I want to say, beat them by two possessions. Uh, yeah, it was like 41 30, and Marshall scored a late touchdown. So yeah. there's a little bit of confidence that I. They're in control the whole game. And that was with yeah. Chase Litton at Marshall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I think there's a huge. I, I don't know what to make of us coming off a bye you when you come off a bye you favor the better coach right 
So and hopefully that's us. <laughs> well, it's not Doc Holiday. I mean, <laughs> that's true. It's just, it's just what it's just whether or not we can get consistent play. That's that's it. That's that's going to be my key to the game. We need consistent play from the entire team. Uh, mixed play calling where we can utilize the outside, utilize our speed. Even though Marshall's very fast, it'll be a bit tougher to you know open up. They're until- big. It, Lane said it. He's like, I don't want to offend the other teams in the conference. They're the most talented team in the conference. We know this because Marshall gets all the Florida kids players. who yep. have For some reason want to go to West Virginia. <laughs> a zero point zero GPA, and they Ooh. jam them in a school there, and they like <coughs> talented kids. So it's you know I I don't know it's. This is probably the toughest game to predict. I was more confident a week ago than I am now. Yeah. I think talking about I mean, it makes us all, you know, go back on our uh, – on what we're thinking. But, um, yeah. De- definitely, definitely nervous. Uh, any any other keys to the game you guys have? Consi- I have uh, consistent play uh, and, and well, open consistent play calling. Play, so clear. I, I say yeah. – I'll give out hard things – I think you keep you keep Tyree Brady under 80 yards. That's what we did last year. I mean, he was pretty much a non-factor last year. They're yeah, tight he, end. I mean, he had a couple first downs. I, the, the difference between us beating them last year is Chaitlis Linton threw interceptions, and our quarterback didn't. Yeah, that's true. And, and their tight end killed us last year. They're like every – especially on that last drive – um, oh yeah, the fourth and ten. He made a I great mean, catch. Yeah, the, I mean, they, they is very talented tight end. I don't, I don't know if he's still there. Hopefully. I think, I think he was picked up by somebody. He's, he's playing in the league somewhere. Yeah. So that was, that was tough because he, like every, every like, long down and distance with third and ten, fourth and ten. They was like he found the tight end, you know, coming over the middle or something like that uh, after scrambling for a bit. So we'll see. I mean, certainly. Um, I don't feel I, I don't feel negative. I, I, you know, it's not like oh, I think he's going to go in there and lose. But um, I think there's like, like I said, it, the the score could very easily be forty five twenty seven if you. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at that at all. I don't think we're going to score forty five. I my my thing is is I I think if we get to twenty eight. Okay. In, in granted, we're going to be completely wrong. This is how football predictions worth. It's going to end up <laughs> 62, 60. You know, everyone sits yeah. here. This, nobody's an expert. Right. Guys on TV play. They always say low scoring battle. Next thing you know, there's points everywhere. It's yeah. it's a game with 18 to 22 year old kids. You know, you just you don't right. know. But I, I I think if you're in a game that's in the low, you know, the high teens, low 20s, kind of like the Middle Tennessee games, it favors middle. It's going to favor Marshall. Because that will come down to Tyree Brady just making one or two catches on the sideline, a home PI call in a big situation. We're all throwing our shit at the TV or our laptops in this case. (laughs) And it's, you know, don't don't make it that game. I I think another (laughs) key is, is, and I just, you know, from watching so much O-line play the last two weeks to – defend Antonio Riles, who I actually think is one of our better offensive linemen after seeing it. Um, I think Kareth White needs to touch the ball 15 to 20 times. He's getting really good. I want Kareth White and Motor on the field at the same time. But, okay, (laughs) the announcer mentioned that when I was rewatching it. It's so – you say that, but – it sounds great to have a bunch of weapons on the field, but it, I'm not saying for all they the don't complement each other. Like you can design plays. It, you got to remember if you're if you're taking Kareth White, if you have Motor and Kareth White off the field, you're probably taking a tight end out. So Take you can only out. hand the ball off to one of them. Yeah. And if you hand the ball off to Motor and Kareth White's on the field, you're probably you have one less blocker. So just kind of yeah. think of that maybe there's some plays you can design. Right, that, that's, what I'm, that's like what I'm saying. I'm not uh, saying every single down. Some type of option where you're, you know, you're optioning to one guy and maybe pitching to another, kind of like an option read or, you know, maybe a throw, like some sort of screen where, you, you know, you're yeah. getting defense going one way at the running back and kind of throwing back to another. Um, 
I see FAU's expanding. It's they're trying to get their up middle of the field screen game a little bit going more with these two guys. But you know, as someone pointed out to me, Delt alumnus on the you know, Kareth Waite runs the ball like his kickoff returns. You know, it's it's yeah. one hard cut of just speed. And if the O line's not performing like it was last year, it's it's just kind of good. That speed, it doesn't need to be there. He's gonna get. He, he looks bigger. I mean. Yeah. Oh yeah, he looks like a different animal than he was last year. He doesn't even cut. It's just like he it's he runs straight oh, to the hole. Go, and it's it. and I mean he's like we talked to we talked Jack and I talked about last week. He's one of the fastest guys on the team. He's yeah. gonna get six yards. I want to see him touch the ball, and I think it's good for Motor. Motor had his long runs of touchdowns late last week because right. he only had nineteen carries. So, yeah, you know I I think. If you go through the splits of last year, a lot of Motors' big runs came in the second half when the defense was just worn down. Motors yeah. not a, you know, he, those everyone's great at stopping the run in the first quarter. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's you have the energy, just go. I will keep them in front of you. Especially and Marshall. All of a sudden, you know that the the motor cut. It, it, you just don't have the same energy to go after it. As right. you did, so that's where, that's where Motors was successful last year, and that guy on the board was like, "Oh, you know, our runs didn't come till late." I'm like, "That's think about the game. Think of Motors' big runs last year. They were they were late." Yeah, yeah. You know, the, I mean, the the Western Kentucky game. Last yeah, those he had what like 50 yards going into the fourth quarter, and then he had yeah. 200 in the fourth quarter, and that's when everything changed. Shoot, you can say that's when everything changed for FAU. That's when everything changed yeah. for Western Kentucky because Western Kentucky hasn't done squat since. Yeah, well, you know, you took your chance on a guy who doesn't call plays at a school that wasn't that good at offense. Right. That was pretty – I think I think all of us probably saw And then he hired his dad as the D.C. It's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like getting a defensive line coach to be the head coach. Yes, defense it is kind of like that. Yeah, there, there it is. It all comes Hashtag. full circle, guys. Hashtag win today. Um, all right, well – uh, I think we've we've jabbered on enough, and uh, you know, I think it's pretty clear that we are – all three of us are pretty uneasy about the game, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, – hopefully we'll be, we'll be back here next week celebrating a win. Game is on – you know, don't try to find it on TV. It's on Facebook, which is okay. I mean, the, the feed has been pretty good. And, the, excellent. The quality is excellent, and the production is yeah. good. Yeah, so it, it, I, I certainly don't mind, you know, hook your laptop up to your TV or something like that. But um, yeah. I got to watch it in a bar, a laptop at a bar this week. So <laughs> be, um, that'll be that'll be interesting. So hopefully- you guys think I, what's I'm not big on the predictions, but I, I I think it's total cliche. But I think it's I don't know. Go go ahead. What do you think? I I think twenty three sixteen we lose. I just I'm not crazy about every a lot of the variables in this game jack uh it hurts man uh we were dogs uh going into this week by what three points and it flipped and we became three point favorites we're three now i i saw us on my on my bookie with three i mean yeah, yeah. The, the people are putting money on us let's see what happens game time sharps can come the other way that happened against middle tennessee but it's it, it's it's tough. Um, I would not be shocked if we lose. It's, no, I I, I don't think we'll be shocked. I, I we're just and anything can happen. I mean, with, with this team this year, no, we can't say that the defense is going to have come out and have a good game. We can't say the offense is going to have come out and have a good game. They both they both could have great games. In which case, you know, like I said, it'll be forty five twenty seven. Um, I, well, I yeah. think the, the biggest thing is is. I've watched this team for six games, and I feel like I know nothing about them. Exactly. Yeah. I like who, who is the who is our real team? I thought going in the middle, we would find out who our our real. It's not even by team. game; it's by quarter. You know, it's <laughs> it's it's yeah. It's, it's yeah. The team that it was up anywhere. in thirty-five seconds, four touchdowns against Bethune. Right. Yeah. Or the team that was up twenty of twenty-six 21. to seven. Against us or up early, it's like the quarter, you know, 21 to three against middle. The first right? half against UCF minus the first drive. I mean, yeah. or even the, th- you know, if you take out that team, you know, I, I think we played a lot better in the UCF game than 
a lot of people say that was ugly. I there's so many good things in that game. And yep. you watch UCF more, and it's like, damn, man, if we didn't turn over the ball in that game, we're probably we're in, in a, it. We're in that game. Know, yeah. yeah. Uh, that that being said, uh, I'll I'll say we'll we'll take the dub. Uh, <sighs> barely. I love that vine. Uh, twenty. Jeez, man. Twenty-seven to. 24 and that seven is going to come because we're most likely going to miss an extra point or two point was, conversion at some was, point. Was was so. this the week last year we played North Texas? Looking October mid October. Give me a second, I'll find out. I want to say give or take a week, and and I'm only saying that because I thought we'd lose that game. I you know we we we'd only played. We, I'm like, we, we beat a Middle Tennessee with their backup quarterback. by we, like, we dominated that game, but still Middle Tennessee drove. We, I think we beat them like 35-23. It wasn't yeah. – it wasn't we a weren't smoking them at people early. And, I, and then we played one other team after that. I, after Middle Tennessee, we went on the road and played someone in one, and it was like, okay, there's some momentum. But North Texas was really good out west early like they were this year. And I remember – you know, being in the stand saying, you know, North Texas is good. I don't think we're there yet. You know, I'm happy we beat a Middle Tennessee. That was my attitude last year. And then we go out and like have the most impressive win in all FAU history. <laughs> so I'm just trying to compare where my confidence is at in the team at this it, point last year to this year. So yeah, I didn't so, think we'd win yeah. that North Texas game. I'm like, you know, I looked at that team at that point and said, no, I just don't think we're there yet. And I'm kind of looking at this the same way. You know, will we go out and have 847 yards of total offense? Right. <laughs> Not, but <laughs> it, it was this point uh, last year when we played North Texas. It was Middle Who did we play before North Texas in between Middle Tennessee and uh, Old Dominion? And right after Old Dominion, going into North Texas was a bye week. Okay. okay. So, yeah, we beat, we beat Old Dominion, who was really bad at that point, starting a true freshman quarterback. Yeah. We had like five that, picks in that game. Yeah, 17-year-old quarterback, Jason Driscoll, tied the program record for most rushing touchdowns in a game with four. Yeah. Um, that, that really goes to show uh, how that game went. It was 58-28, I want to say, 60 So, to- we're coming off Old Dominion and a bye. Yeah. Hopefully, history repeats itself. And we beat Old Dominion pretty good. I I mean, in comparison, we beat Old Dominion about how we did last year. And I, I remember I was there at that game, and Old yeah. Dominion drove on us early. We just forced a lot more turnovers. Old Dominion got yards, so. Yeah. I think they're – and uh, I'm Jeremy just trying Cox to compare the pattern of the too. season. Yeah. 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 So, all right. And then my, my prediction, I'll say 31-24 FAU. I'm going with the W. This we get a few. It's goals. another factor. So we yeah. played that well off a of bye. Yeah, I'm say I'm I'm going with I'm going with the bye, um, and that's why we're going to put up 34 points. Or 30 Remember points. that game was Harrison Bryant's breakout game against North Texas. They started using yeah. him. That was like that wrinkle. The using him was a major wrinkle coming out of that bye. Yeah. What will we see wrinkle wise this game? So curious. Yeah. So. All right. Well, uh, we thank you guys for uh, for sticking around with us, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. And for Jack and Shane, I I'm Dan, and um, go Els. <laughs>